So technically, you can either wait a few minutes or you could even get started. We, have we are recording. We have a quorum with four? With four? Yes, yes, Stephanie. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. No, you don't. <laughs> sorry about that. I was just counting boxes, not the fact that one of them is me. <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah. And Laura is out. Steve is out as well today, right? Laura's out. Laura is out and Steve, yes, I believe Steve. Um, yeah, he was iffy, but I think he may not be able to join us today. Okay. So we're waiting on Dwayne or Don or Jesse. All right. Oh, well, Laura's here. You are here. Oh, she was. Great. Well, you have more more than a quorum. Yeah. Um, and so we are recording, and you do need someone to be the minute taker. Yeah, Dwayne, I believe it's your turn today. Um, happy to do so. I'll right. keep talking and I'll get prepared. <laughs> All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So uh, let's uh, look at the last uh, meeting's meeting minutes. So everyone reviewed it. Do, yep. we need to bring it up or do you want me to post it or not? I can quickly share. Is there anyone who did not review the meeting minutes? Start with that. All right. uh, Stephanie, I don't think we need to. If we want to just okay, sure. Any questions on the meeting minutes? Andre, you're on mute. By the way, you were saying something. Um, we switched off in um, the beginning from Vasu to me taking notes, and it's noted. I, in I referred to. Um, something in um, Anna's report that isn't in Anna's report. It was the um, new tool that the town is using. Um, I didn't know what that was called for communication, I think, input. Or is it a, I think a it's way the engage of, engage tool? I think it was yeah, live. Yeah. I think, I think you have the link as well there in your meeting minutes, Sandra. Um, hmm? All right. Does anyone want to make a motion to accept the minutes? I motion to accept the minutes. Thanks, Stella. A second. Okay, I need a voice vote in no particular order. Goldner? Yes. Rose? Yes. D? Yes. Raghavan? Yes. Selman? Yes. Rigger? Yes. Rocker? <clears throat> uh, abstain. Allison? Yes. All right, thank you everyone. So we have a packed agenda today. So let's start with public comments. Okay, let me see. If anyone in the public would like to speak, please electronically raise your hand and I'll unmute you. All right, don't see any hands. Um, let's, uh, yeah, nothing. Okay. Anna, do you have updates from a town council standpoint? I know we talked about um, the Engage Amherst last week. 
Oh, the last meeting. Okay, Anna, you're unmuted. Thank you, Hi, everybody. Um, no major updates. Yep. Uh, so I think there were two tools that might have been being referred to as one. So there's the Engage Amherst tool, which is an asynchronous um, online portal for gathering input. And what I was referring to, I believe, in the last meeting was the rental registration bylaw. Um, but I think what you were referring to, uh, Andra, uh, can you correct me? Is it Andra or Andra? I say Andra. Andra, thank Others you. Say Andra, it doesn't matter. It does matter. Okay, so uh, what Andrew, I think, was also referring to was the in-the-moment feedback tool that they were using during the CRC meeting, which I believe was on Monday, um, and that was that's called Community Click, uh, and that's something that we're still piloting and figuring out how to utilize. Um, so there were two different things, but all that said, the Engage Amherst site is still active um, for the rental registration bylaw review process or uh, work process. So please uh, go on there and, and share all of your thoughts and opinions because they are deeply valued. Um, and then if you have something as a committee that you would like to make sure you're, you're um, speaking on behalf of your committee, I know that Steve is really involved uh, right now with Mandy on that work, but I'm also happy to advocate uh, for, for y'all as much as I can. So please keep me, um, let me know how I can help. Um, the only other thing to have on your radar, uh, we have talked briefly about the Zero Waste Amherst, um, sorry, it's not coming from Zero Waste Amherst, it's coming from a couple of different counselors regarding Zero Waste, there we go. Uh, and that is, there's no official proposal in front of the council right now, but we are discussing it uh, more conceptually on at our August 15th meeting. We do not have another meeting in July. So if you're interested in, um, uh, comp universal composting and uh, trash hauler contracts. Um, I don't know how to make that sound more exciting other than that it is pretty exciting. So uh, please consider joining us for August 15th or sending any comments that you have either as public comment or um, if you'd like to speak as a committee, I'm happy to relay anything that you'd like me to relay. But again, there's no specific proposal. So now is a great time um, for, for you to give input. And I know last time, as just a reminder, because I'm reiterating the same points. Last time I we had discussed how you all had endorsed a prior proposal, um, and it might make sense once we have a new proposal to bring it back to you to see if to confirm that you still endorse it um, once we once we have that in front of us. That is it for me. Nothing nothing major on on our front. That's not true. Nothing um, nothing majorly new that pertains to to ECAC. I won't I won't bore you with sewer regulations right now. So. That's, yeah, that's Anna, Are there any yeah questions? Yeah, thanks for the update. You also wanted to talk about the capital inventory level. Oh yes, so I um, have not had an opportunity to check in on that yet, but it's still on my radar uh, because we don't have a meeting in July. I'm hoping I might have a couple extra hours to um, to start working on that. And if you all want to get that on a future agenda as an agenda item and let me know, I'm happy to. Um, if you can give me some notice, I'm happy to prep um, prep something on that and maybe we can come up with some some ideas, but I know Stephanie and I will need to connect and um, all of that. But as you're thinking about your future agendas, if you put it on a future one, please let me know um, when that is and, and we can make sure we're prepared to discuss it. Sorry, okay. Vasu, just for the minutes. Um, what was the question? It was on the capital, what? Inventory memo. Thank you, yep. Yeah. Does that work in terms of? planning ahead? Yeah, so Anna, do you think you'll be ready for the, our next meeting in two weeks or do you need more time? Um, I'm gonna toss that to Stephanie to see if uh, she thinks she and I should connect before that um, and if that's possible in the next few, in the next two weeks. Okay. Absolutely so possible. I, I, yeah, okay. Yes. All right, so then yes, I think in two weeks that's fine and um, we will, yeah, we'll go from there. Thanks, All right, Stephanie, any updates from you? Sure. Um, so in your packets, I included a few items. Um, one is the report that was done for that limited um, solar project analysis. So we hired um, Cadmus Group, 
with our meta grant fundings that we got through DOER. Um, and that funding supported an investigation of specific buildings and parking lots that were identified from um, a request from town management on which buildings and parking lots they wanted an analysis of paired with battery storage. So I provided that um, document in your packets, that report. It also just recently went out to the town council as well. I also included the RFP for the solar assessment. The RFP went out on Monday. Um, Duane worked quite directly with me on developing that RFP. So basically I drafted, sent it to him, he edited, I sent it back to staff. And so it sort of went back and forth for quite a few weeks actually, um, till we finally came up with the final version that we all agreed upon. And so that went out, um, it's being uh, submitted through the, the state system, which means that there's um, a limited number of uh, vendors that we can reach out to, but it's an extensive list, but it's just, they've already been vetted through the state. So actually it's a, it's a decent list. We didn't, we didn't certainly know everybody on there, but both uh, uh, Dwayne looked at it, I looked at it. Um, so we didn't know everyone, we knew a few, but we um, thought we would just send it to the entire list, just that way we covered all bases. So um, that's a two week turnaround. So we should be hearing back with um, proposals within the next two weeks. And because I am on the agenda later, I'm just gonna limit my comments to those two items unless you have questions about something specific. Uh, thanks, Stephanie. Uh, any questions of uh, the updates from Stephanie? Uh, any progress with um, uh, family outreach? Yeah, yes, we have a draft contract, but we're still in the contract stage. So hopefully that will, I would say within another week or so, we should be able to really get that moving. But they're poised and ready to go, but they're being patient. So it's hard, it's summertime too. Stephanie, will we be, I mean, I know there's a, I'm looking at the feasibility assessment. Um, uh, Duane, will you are you planning on sharing like a quick summary of what's going to be done? Uh, what's the expectation from ECAC? Um, sorry, I'm taking minutes while I'm listening. Uh, so, is that um, uh, uh, was that with re with regard to this uh, solar assessment? Um, Correct. The, the, um, yeah, I mean, I'm happy to. Uh, speak with Stephanie on, on that scope and sort of how ECAC can be helpful and will be helpful in that process? I think how we planned was, how, how we planned to approach it was that ECAC is identified as having at least one direct meeting with the consultant in the development of, uh, of that assessment. And they're putting together a timeline. So I think it's one, you know, this is a detail that we will have to sort of flush out with them once we, uh, create a contract with a, a vendor. So once we know who they are and we have some more specific conversations, there certainly will be at least one meeting in which you all will be weighing in. But I, I fully expect you all to be getting a draft of the document uh, at least once, if not twice in the process before there's a final. Okay. And, and I think there's another way that we will be involved and Stephanie, um, you can um, offer your thoughts on this as well, but um, the, in the scope of work is for the consultant to look at um, <clears throat> various different scenarios of, of uh, how how a certain number of megawatts um, could might be um, uh, cited in the town uh, uh, and over a, a variety of, of types of sites, built environment, non-built environment, and uh, and that though those scenarios in terms of how many megawatts <clears throat> we want to look at. Uh, will be provided to the to the consultant by the town, uh, but my my sus suspicion and uh, desire would be that ECAC would have a, a, a work to to offer to the town and some suggestions on to the town that we can work on together to offer to Stephanie and the town uh, to to um, guide the consultant. Okay. Um, thanks, Ray. 
All right. Uh, any other questions for Stephanie or Glenn? All right. Any ECAC member updates? Um, I, if it's okay, I would take a moment to speak to the group about the transition from uh, from the previous chairs to the new chairs. Um, so if anybody has something like a glass, grab it. Um, I would I want to speak to, I wrote this down, so it's going to be a little awkward. I'll be quick as I can. Laura and Andra, thank you. Um, really thanks to everyone here, but for the past three years, we've been meeting every two weeks, sometimes more, sometimes less, to participate in what I can only describe as the impossible. Yet somehow you make it feel possible. This is a struggle that can be technical, political, interpersonal, patient, urgent, frustrating, and thanks to you, even at times satisfying and successful. We'll never know how much time you spent organizing for meetings, synthesizing ideas, preparing presentations, and thinking about this committee way more than is probably healthy. I want to read a quote from my favorite poem slash manifesto, which is, be joyful though you have considered all the facts. I think you all probably know what that means in the context of the climate crisis. Um, in this case, I'm joyful because you are the facts. You're ready to speak truth to power, to do so with poise, science, and commitment. I am honored to push for energy and climate action by your side. You set the bar very high, no pressure, Vasu and Lori. So take a quick moment, raise a glass or a fist or whatever you guys have. This one's, I'm gonna say to our chairs, past, present, and future. It's crazy work. Thank you. Here, here. Well said. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Andra. Yeah, no pressure at all, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like we may need something stronger than the iced coffee I just found. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other ECAC member updates to beat that one? I wanted to um, report in on um, state climate bill progress. Um, last week, the um, Senate and House uh, voted a decent climate bill. Um, it had a lot about wind and um, electric vehicles but it also had some things that improve on mass save, um, including um, uh, setting a, a um, sunset for um, programs that um, provide incentives for fossil fuel equipment. And um, uh, taking biomass out of the renewable portfolio standard and um, other uh, pieces that are really important. And right now it's on Governor Baker's desk and we are, <laughs> us, you know, climate activists, organizations are, are asking people to contact the governor and ask him to sign it as is not to make um, any negotiations behind closed doors um, to weaken it. Um, and he has until Sunday. And that's, um, you know, maybe he'll do nothing. And then the bill goes in uh, as, as is. So, um, there's not much time, but but register your your opinion that um, the legislature already did a lot of compromising, and they should they should sign. Yes, Wayne. Uh, I'll just <clears throat> add add to to to, to Andra uh, of the uh, importance and and really lots of wonderful provisions in this climate bill. 
Um, I'll just uh, highlight one that um, I'm really excited about and worked on with with the legis with the local delegation, uh, which was to restore uh, the adder in the smart program for the poll pollinator friendly PV um, adder, uh, which was taken out um, not so much by DOER but DPU uh, and um, the our local legislature local delegation. Uh, was uh, really supportive in um, in trying to get the, uh, or putting that back in uh, legislatively so DOER can take action on that without waiting for DPU. Uh, that's really exciting. It's it's um, U UMass Clean Energy Extension is involved in, in that certification process, which has come to a screeching halt uh, in the six months that that um, was taken away as an adder. Uh, and, um, and up to that point, there was hundreds of acres of... Uh, of uh, pollinator habitat that was on the books to be um, put into ha uh, pollinator habitat as these solar develop solar projects were being developed. Thanks, friend. All right, any other ECAC member updates? Yes, Laura. Oh. Thanks, Jesu, and thank you, Jesse, for that very nice message. Um, so, received note, and Stephanie, you may know more about this than I do, but um, that the Green Communities program is getting revamped, and they're looking for feedback um, on the proposed revamp of a new program called Climate Leaders, um, which if I understand correctly, would be sort of the next level for, for communities that have been actively participating in green communities, which we have thanks to the steadfast work of Stephanie. Um, we may be eligible for more funding and opportunities through this new program that they're building. Um, so they're asking for feedback by August 5th. I can forward this email or Stephanie, if you got the same email that I, that I have, you could forward it to the group. I think it probably makes sense for each of us to just submit comments ourselves just in the interest of time. Um, but I think anything you want, there's, there's a slide deck included that kind of runs through the proposed updates as well as a webinar that you could watch if you want to watch them present the slides. Um, I think, you know, some ideas that popped up based on some of our discussions are maybe, you know, how could the green communities or climate leaders program support us on some of the things that we know we need and that other communities probably also need like inventory support, data collection, um, maybe there's also opportunities here to build in like, you know, the requirements uh, or the idea we've thrown around before of, you know, having all the job descriptions that are coming out of the town include climate action as part of that description or in integrating climate action as a performance metrics for town staff, um, you know, making sure sustainability as a, as a director level position or higher, um, things like that. So. Those are just ideas of things we could throw in. Um, but Stephanie, if you could circulate that, um, that would, and folks can just respond if they have time. And, and Laura, the feedback goes to Stephanie for everybody. No, no. So you there's actually. Submitted. Oh, yeah. You, there's yeah, a form. Oh, okay. um, I really recommend watching the uh, video. It was only like 23 minutes long. And you, you, I understood it better um, hearing it than just reading it myself. Okay. All right, so we're just gonna go into that form and submit our own comments, right? Basically, okay, all right. Yeah. Is there a clarity of where to find that information? I'm gonna send yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, if Stephanie sends the email, it's just a link right here to right. say submit form, so. Okay. Thanks, Laura. And then uh, I've been. Oh, Fasu, you froze.
Can you hear me okay now? Now we can. Okay. Yeah, um, no, I was just saying, um, I'm starting to meet with Stephanie offline to figure out what the transition plan uh, needs to look like. You know, again, thank you, Laura and Andra for all the great work. So, you know, I know we struggled towards the end with the implementation. So, um, you know, between Stephanie, Laurie and myself, we'll start to look at how we wanna go about uh, implementing strategy. So um, there's gonna be new things on the agenda that will come up uh, at the next meeting. Uh, I wanna start with the charge again. Uh, also look at our town manager's goals and see how we align. And um, we, we have uh, community groups now that, different community groups now that they've formed a coalition group. Uh, Andra, you, uh, Amherst Climate Justice Community or something is what it's called? Alliance, yeah, Amherst. Alliance, yeah. So um, it's the, the organizations in town that are um, resident run. Yeah, so everyone's doing things and everyone's doing different things. So uh, I'm going to be connecting with these different advocacy groups and see how we can all align and work work towards a common goal. So more to come, I'll keep you updated. Okay, um, let's go to the next topic, our ARPA Fund Sustainability Initiatives, Stephanie. Thank you, Vasu. I distributed uh, two documents to you. One is um, ARPA Sustainability Programming Snapshot, and the other is ARPA Sustainability Intern, Snap Intern Snapshot. Um, I'm going to open the programming document and share that with you. So give me one moment here. Okay, can you see that okay? All right. So when the town had um, received the ARPA funding, mostly department heads were reached out to to mm -hmm. ask for uh, programmatic ideas for use of ARPA funds. And I was contacted for um, identifying some sustainability programming. And I did initially have just a few items that were uh, very kind of baseline. And so I shared those with Laura initially, but then I was asked by the town manager and the finance director to further elaborate on the programming um, and identify the use of funds. So this is the um, information that was submitted to the town manager and approved. So we currently have $385,000 in ARPA funding to specifically be used for a residential heat pump program. And where I see you all fitting in with this is helping me develop this. So we are identifying a staff position. It would be a part-time position um, where we would hire someone to sort of assist with, um, you know, sort of coordinating the outreach, kind of being the, the lead point person uh, for the program. So I would certainly be there, you know, be working with them, but it would really be somebody else hired from the community, hopefully, who could um, lead this initiative. So this is something that I was just thinking that I think the best way is for me to draft something, flush it out a little more, and then share it with you, um, maybe at the next meeting or meeting after that. But, you know, I would basically give you all something to sort of review and weigh in on, um, you know, give me some feedback and help me sort of uh, identify what that could look like. And I was thinking that I know Laura and I believe even Lori were both wanting to reach out to Block Power if they haven't already. And perhaps this is something that, you know, there could be a partnership for something uh, with a program like this. So um, that was one of the uh, programs I just wanted to identify. Uh, the other, which you are not as really directly involved in, is just the, um, for the land use sector, uh, money for the mobile market. So we have two years of funding for the mobile market, which were, um, the years were actually identified by folks who organized the mobile market 
because they were set for the next couple of years, but felt in 25 and 26 that they weren't as secure. So they now have funding to get them through those, those years as well. Um, and then we have some funding that's identified for the community gardens, um, mostly I think that might go towards signage um, and additional languages, but there may be other things that we might be using that for. There's also $25,000 that was identified for a community dashboard. Um, I was specifically thinking about the um, Lundgren Associates uh, Environmental Sustainability Dashboard. I think that's the one that Concord uses. Other communities like Dedham use it as well. And it's kind of the kind of the gold standard of sustainable sustainability dashboards, uh, but they're they're not inexpensive. Um, it's you know fifteen thousand dollars I believe to set it up, and then ten thousand dollars for maintenance of like the next year. So this at least gives us you know the the first year of establishing the site, a year of um, their technical support for updating. Um, but then there's ways in which tools in which they can um, provide you with to update it on your own and we can look at that down the road. But this at least will get it going and give it at least a solid year of um, you know, technical support. The other thing we got funding for is for um, a greenhouse gas inventory of our municipal fleet. So there is, I think I mentioned that I had we had spoken to a company called Utilimark. Um, and the finance director and I met with them last week. And so we are going to move forward with uh, creating a contract with them to create a, a baseline greenhouse gas emissions inventory with our fleet, and then a timeline in which to change that out. You know, one of the things we discovered is, you know, they don't necessarily just come in and, you know, do the inventory for us, which means that we have to provide them with information. So. Um, I'm hoping that this is not going to be a lot more work, or I may have to reach out to the um, Clean Energy Extension and see if you can throw me uh, an intern <laughs> to help me with this. So, um, so I don't have any an intern identified for that work, but I'm hoping that we don't need to have one. Um, and then let's see. I think that was kind of the gist of that programming. Um, this is just kind of the breakdown of like how the funding would be split up over time. This isn't in stone quite yet. Um, you know, this has to be fleshed out a little more. So again, how I see you all supporting this work, especially with the heat pump program is just like helping develop that, helping me develop that. Um, and maybe even helping with, again, we talk about education and outreach, but helping to let community members know that this program will exist. Um, I think the community dashboard, certainly, um, I would think as we develop that, we may even have the consultant speak with you all as well to see if there are elements of things you think need to be on there that you would like to see. So there's more opportunity for input there and guiding that. And then the fleet inventory, I think is just something that I'm gonna be sharing information with you. And it's just more data that we've been looking to have. So, um, so I'm going to stop sharing for a moment and I'm going to go to the other document. So go with me a moment here. So this, I have uh, spoken about getting um, an intern. There is funding, there's $10,000 $10, for securing an intern. And there is actually two programs. Only one is really fully kind of identified here. And that's basically to give us an update on our greenhouse gas emissions inventory. So um, my plan for that is to go through the UNH Sustainability Institute uh, program again and secure a fellow. Um, they go, uh, they take in fellows from across the country. Um, it's kind of a rigorous application process and the level of work is pretty high. So um, our last intern who did the inventory was through this program and I was very impressed with all of the interns that I, uh, the fellows that I met. Um, 
we had a gathering uh, of all of them and all, you know, they all discuss the projects that they're working on and it's quite varied, very diverse, very diverse group, um, but all incredibly capable and impressive students. So, um, so there's that position. The other inventory that I'm looking to have done and that now that we have this funding, we can secure another fellow is to do the, the building analysis. So we would, hire a fellow to do an inventory of our municipal buildings. And this would be the municipal stock, building stock, but to identify all of our um, heating and cooling systems and having a timeline for transitioning, like, you know, rating where they are and having a, a maybe a timeline for transitioning those over to um, renewables and moving away from fossil fuels. So that's the other inventory. Um, so that's the ARP funding. I just wanted to give you an update and I couldn't share it before because I had to make sure that the town manager was okay with everything that I was um, proposing. And that was true for all department heads. That wasn't just me. Um, they, need, they needed to review and make sure that they were um, in agreement with what the funding was being proposed for. So I didn't know if anyone had any questions. Yes, do I? And then, uh... <clears throat> yep. Yeah, uh, just a quick question. Um, the heat pump program is obviously a, a big one and and, and uh, exciting, very exciting for, for us. And um, uh, I'll, I'm sure Steve's excited too. Um, um, and I, I think I missed it, but can you clarify? It's three hundred eighty-five thousand dollars, which is wonderful. Um, uh, it, was that, did you say that, that some of that money was also to go to um, um, support a staff person to help administer this program? Um, or is that really being done in house? And is, is the bulk of the 385 available to support incentives or in some way help to uh, get the heat pumps out there? The bulk of the 385 is really for the incentives, and the staffing would be part time. Um, so it wouldn't be all in-house. Um, we would need to bring someone on to do this. I don't think we have anyone who can right now, and I certainly can't, and I'd be okay. the most logical person. So um, it is part-time. Originally, I had actually proposed a full-time position. I was seeing it as job growth and an opportunity, and so, um, but that was, uh, it was recommended that we use more of that for the actual program and less for hiring a staff position. Yeah. So you'll bring that to us um, maybe for the next meeting to dig in a little bit? I will shoot for the next meeting <laughs> to have a draft. Uh, yes, Laura. Um, yeah, regarding the heat pump program, maybe this is details to be worked out, but of course there is, especially for low and moderate income families, there's an enormous amount of help available through mass saves. Uh, and I think that number is going up with the new, um, with the new incentives. So it would seem that, but those are rebates, I think, not upfront money. So there might be, I mean, maybe these are all details. It seems to me that this has to play nicely somehow with the mass saves program and uh, sort of, you know, tack on to that in a way that makes it easier because right now it's so hard to access that money, even if it's, fully paid for or almost fully paid for, just figuring out how to get there um, and implementing. <laughs> right, so this this is targeted for low to moderate income. That's yeah. the that's what this is specifically targeted for, for who it's targeted for. Right. But those are the details, as you say, that need to be worked out. So, you know, and, and the idea is that this, even though there are some robust incentives that are offered you know, if someone is low income, exactly, those incentive, incentives don't do a whole lot and a rebate doesn't do a whole lot. Right, exactly. To have it up front. So, so, yeah, so the idea is we have to sort of work this out to figure out what that incentive could be. And maybe there's different incentives at different income levels. We just have to work out the details of all of that. Right, because that $385,000 will go a heck of a lot farther if we can make sure that everybody who accesses it is also making use of, is also 
eventually making use of those uh, funds from mass saves. Right, it can be part of the requirement. So again, right. this is something we have to flush out. Yeah, so I'd be I'd be happy to work on that if you're looking for help with that. That's I'm thinking about that now anyway. That's what yeah, I'm doing. Yeah, absolutely. I would be happy to work more directly with you on that, Laurie. Even in the next few weeks, so yep. we could meet meet virtually. Yep. I'm making a note. Yeah, and, and Laurie, I was also thinking about you know you were reaching out to Block Power, and you know Stephanie also mentioned that I think there's probably. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm making squinty faces because I'm getting less and less. Um, yeah, I, I, Black Powers has yet to get back to me. They have a couple more weeks to do so, but I'm not as impressed with what they offer anymore. They haven't even been able to find a partner in the area, so I'm not sure they're going to be any help at all. I'm going to keep talking to them, but um, I'm, I've had much more luck actually talking directly with program folks at Mass Saves. They've been extremely helpful in figuring mm. out how things work. So. Uh, that would be the first thing we ought to do in putting together a heat pump plan is get on the phone with them and find out yep. you know, how to make this work. Yep. Yeah, and uh, I guess a question for Laura, Laura, I know you mentioned a couple of months ago that you replaced your existing heating system uh, to heat pump. Um, I, I just wonder if it ties well, if you were able to document the steps and it ties well with Laurie, what you're trying to put together um, with everything that... Um, you know, municipalities should do, households should do that document that you're trying to put together. Does it tie well with Laura, you know, the steps that it, somebody needs to take if block power is not the solution, then, I mean, it's gonna be outreach and more education and a simple to follow steps uh, to help the, uh, I mean, this is, we're talking low income and middle income community. So um, I think really thinking about spoon feeding the information I think might be a good way to go if block power is not going to be the liaison. Yeah, so I just wonder, Laura, if that's something that you could put together and I mean, we're trying to build this document and hopefully that document could be I mean, everything that households or municipality should do. Um, and these are the steps that they need to follow. Uh, so are you talking to me or Laura? Okay. Laura. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Happy to to jot down my experience and maybe we can put a call out for other folks that have done it. Um, I think the the challenge, at least my understanding of what block power offered and what maybe this program could offer or somehow offer is the um so I, cer I certainly think education and outreach could go a long way in, in making some of the steps that I had to go through simple, simplified, um, you know, but it's not going to help folks that don't have the money to put up front or credit to put up credit. Really, we had to get the loan and, and we got the loan from the credit union and you have to have credit to get that, right? So like things like that, that you have to be able to do that is not going to be applicable to everyone. And so just keeping that that in mind, but yeah, happy to write to send to Lori or whoever's de developing this document. Um, can, I, can I add something? Um, so what, as far as I can tell, what a place like Block Power does is they have a HVAC partner in the area who comes in and does exactly what happens when you have any HVAC contractor in your house, which is they come up with a plan for you tell them what you want, they come up with a plan for how to do the transition. Um, if you know what you want, or if you want to let them just decide, it's easy. If you have any special needs, it's difficult. But uh, Block Power partners with that person. Um, they also get an estimate of what the energy transition is going to cost you or, or save you month to month by looking at two years worth of energy bills. Now, this is a service that's fantastic if it works. I haven't seen it work yet. I'm still waiting. I sent them all that information months ago now. Um, now saves claims they're going to be offering the same thing. That was in the most recent community partner uh, discussion. Uh, so if they do that, then that would be great. So, but it's it's hard to deal with them. So anyway, they, they come up with this estimate and then based on that, they come up with a financing plan for you that includes all of the local incentives. So yeah. ideally block power would come in and just with their local partner, tell you what to do and how to finance it. 
um, but they don't have a local partner. <laughs> so that makes it hard. I want to say um, that, uh, first of all, asking Black Power as an individual is something very different from asking Black Power to run a program for the town. Um, and yes, if we correct. did it, we could ask Black Power to do it for um, the uh, CCA group, you know, Northampton and Pelham in on it. And um, it, it, it could be much more. <laughs> um, I, I agree. Lucrative yeah. for them and for a partner that might be more interested if there were more work. Um, and second, the, the main thing that Black Power uses in their model is a lease. It's not just loans, um, it, it's, it's a lease. So there could be nothing up front. That is one of their promises. Yes, Laura. Yeah, just to just to highlight what Andre just said is that I think the leasing part of Black Power is what makes it much more accessible to folks. Um, I will also say that um, I, I agree with Andre that you know I think talking to getting more information from them is important, but like the most recent Black Power arrangement with this with a town required like city council. MOU, right? Like it's going to need to be a town-based or a multiple town-based approach. Um, so I think that what's exciting, super exciting about this funding is that I think having a dedicated halftime person focused on this is going to be able to really focus on how we build out this program, right? Um, I, I think that's super exciting. So um, yeah, in the meantime, I think we can share what we offer. There's not a ton of HVAC providers in this area. And of the four I talked to, three of them ghosted me and one of them took four months. So like, I, you know, there's there's bottlenecks throughout the process that we're gonna have to deal with, but um, having somebody focused on dealing with, helping to deal with it um, and us being supportive in different ways to figure out how to deal with some of those bottlenecks, I think is a great path forward. And I was going to jump in and say that there are procurement laws that we have to follow. So obviously, you know, it would be great to work with Block Power, but you know, we might have to sort of open it up and offer it to other consultants and companies. That's why Block Power needs that local partner because only the local partner is eligible for the incentives. Wayne, were you going to say something? Me? Oh, I thought you raised your hand. No, no. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess should we take a two prong approach then? Um, I know there's complexities in the procurement, but at least get estimates or possibilities with block power or consultants. And then if that's not going to work out, the other path would be what can we do? I mean, we have the intern starting soon. What data? what information will he need to continue to move this forward? Laurie, yeah. I wanna make one more comment, which is that one thing that might be helpful um, is that Mass Saves is currently running a residential, uh, what do they call it? Um, Rebate program? Sorry, no, a residential, uh, um, the first to do something, I can't think of the word. Uh, Carbonization. The decarbonization uh, example. What's the, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, pilot. 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 Decarbonization pilot program, right? And uh, it's a little confusing as to what the dates are, but the dates on the application say that it opened last week and it closes next week. So everybody who is interested in converting their house should sign up for this pilot program, especially if you're on ECAC, because it gives us a nice extra insight into how the process works to have mass saves work. You know, they have a partner who's going to work directly with you with, to deal with all of the incentives to do it, to completely convert your home, right? Not just heat pumps, but they're talking about everything. So, and doing the envelope and doing the windows and, and coming in and just doing it as a pilot. Uh, it has extra rebates along with it, but my main interest in applying, which I did yesterday, is to 
I figured that if I, you know, if one of us gets this thing, it's, it's a night, it gives us a little more insight. It gives us a pilot program in our community. Right. Yeah. So is it, my understanding is that they're only choosing 30 across the yeah. state. So sign up. <laughs> I figure I probably won't get it, but maybe if enough of us sign up, one of us will. Okay. So, yes, Stephanie. I just wanted to clarify that the um, the person who would be overseeing the heat pump program would not be an intern. This would be someone that we would be hiring part time. Um, it will be just a, a programmatic position, so it's not an ongoing position for the town. It is just for the period of time that we would run this program. Okay, thanks, Stephanie. Jesse. Uh, the one of the skill sets, or many of the skill sets, that would make that position um, <clears throat> incredibly successful would be someone that has professionally designs and installs heat pumps um there's a lot of skills that would be good is is does that introduce conflict of interest if they work for a company like i just yes <laughs> I, I i figured but maybe there's a way around it okay mm. yes andrew i also um I'm interested in the workforce development piece, Dwayne, um, the, the possibilities here for um, local um, training uh, and, and perhaps um, even looking for a somewhat local, you know, like in the region um, company that might be interested in offering leases. Maybe not something they have ever thought of, but you know, I, I wonder about working the local angle here to to build, you know, a, our own economy, just transition, all that. That's the hopeful idea. <laughs> So Andre, you brought up, uh, oh, Dwayne, yes. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm not sure if Andre just mentioned this because I didn't hear completely, but uh, yeah, it seemed like if we are, if for that heat pump program, if we're looking to engage with a couple heat pump um, vendors that will provide this uh, um, program, work on our, this program with us, maybe a requirement would be that um, they um, take on some apprentice um, from local um, local people uh, that are you know capable and worthy, uh, but that there's an apprentice or some sort of internship program that they are um, required to um, uh, work work with uh, some of the um, local folks to train them up <laughs> on how to how to do this work. I mean, I will say that you know installing heat pumps is 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 probably something that uh, in the long range needs to be done through like our vocational schools and community colleges to have training programs at, at that scale. Um, I'm not, th this this grant probably won't get us there. Um, that's that's uh, something that's in the state um, yeah, bill, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Money for community colleges yeah. to do that. Okay, so I think we talked about uh, a lot of things here. Andra, do you think from us, I know you're part of CCA as well, right? Is that something that you can continue, you can take over the reins from Lori to talk about, talk to Block Power uh, about the potential or other consultants? Um, um, I, I think I, I can say that this would be something that um, local energy advocates would be interested in okay. thinking about. And um, we do have a line of communication formally with Lock Power, but it, that wouldn't be the appropriate way to, to go about introducing a official, you know, kind of yeah. 
contract, I think. I think that would have to happen through the actual um, Valley Green Alliance, which is going to be the three towns. Once we actually make that happen. Mm. OK. Uh, yes, Stella. Um, I just wanted to plant the seeds while apprenticeships and uh, vocational schools and equity are on the table because it, I think it's also relevant if people are writing in or, or calling in about the bill that I, I don't think, I, I think we need without like paid pregnancy leave and not just paid parental leave, we're not ever gonna have equity when it comes to, to like a just transition. Because I mean, speaking as someone who worked a quote unquote like blue collar job during pregnancy, as far as I like, there's a, a lot of these jobs that we're talking about, like actual installation of solar, actual installation of heat pumps are like pretty impossible for a lot of people to do pregnant. And unless there's some provision for that, like it's not, <laughs> it's not going to work. You know what I mean? And so I, as far as I know, the only unions that have some form of like paid pregnancy leave are like some of the iron workers unions. But I'd really like encourage people to bring that up when they're when you're commenting or like advising on this, because what I see a lot in in the blue collar industries that I'm like familiar with is you have increasingly people who can get pregnant who are young and enthusiastic and then like rapid rates of attrition when people want to have kids. And it's not because they like it's not. Well, for a while it was because there was no paid parental leave, but now there's paid parental leave. But I would really encourage people to like, just just point out the paid pregnancy leave thing um, in, any, in any context that involves apprenticeships and uh, just transition and vocational schools. Yeah, thanks, Stella. And then um, Stephanie, um, talking about the community dashboard, you brought up uh, the town of Concord had uh, best practice around their dashboard. There's also the mass save data that has a lot of information on electricity usage. Um, I don't know if our dashboard will eventually tie in with that as well. Um, I, I'm not sure what the plan is, but um, is that, I want to just make sure that that is being considered as well. Because it's the overarching it's state uh, data uh, around electricity right. usage. Right. No, um, nothing's been considered yet because we haven't even gotten past the point of making the proposal and getting it approved. So that's why I said I would be reaching out with you all once we engage um, Kim Lindgren Associates. Okay. All right. Uh, what's our next topic here? Uh, transportation. Um, Stella. Yeah, so Stephanie, do you want to share that chart or should I share that chart? I'm happy to just give me a moment. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so this is the chart that I mentioned last week or two weeks ago from the really great document that Laura sent me. I think it's a really good um, thing for just people to be aware of, especially in the context of this, the ARPA grant doing a fleet inventory because then any any kind of um action items that are raised by the the fleet inventory i think there's likely there's likely a grant here that might might cover some of that one thing that it looked like there was new grant money for that hasn't really been raised and i think i said this two weeks ago too is that these various forms of incentives for employees to electrify private vehicles, which I don't know if that that could or like how much a part of the town's conversation that is, but that's something that was pretty stressed in this document, I would say. But it's just really handy because for some reason the links didn't got broken when I pulled out just two pages from the PDF. But you can kind of see here, it shows you what the funding pool is, how much it's for, whether it's new or existing with the IIJA. And then a bunch of a bunch of information about who it's available to. I think the other interesting thing 
I think there's kind of probably a middle step to, um, and this is sort of getting into just my, my two cents. There's sort of a middle step between the inventory and looking for funding, because I definitely am a little bit concerned that with some of this, there's, there's gonna be the inclination in, in a broad sense to just like replace something that's gas or diesel with something that's electric as opposed to really reconsidering like whether that's even necessary. Um, and that's something that that I, I sort of have experienced with seeing like how sometimes you don't need a medium or heavy duty vehicle for what people are using medium or heavy duty duty vehicles for. And if that's the case, then like those those things can be electrified sooner than maybe could be imagined if you're just trying to replace a heavy duty vehicle with a heavy duty vehicle. Um, but anyways, that's, that's a little bit of a relevant aside. And this chart is, is just, I think, super helpful for, for thinking through some of the funding that might be available to the town. Yeah, thanks, Stella. Do we, is there um, information on what the acronyms mean? And I uh, see formula uh, and it says C and F, like, what does that mean? Yeah, so I think Stephanie's probably better able to speak to this. This is, so when you follow the links, it becomes a little bit more clear, but my understanding is, Stephanie is a formula grant where basically they just like plug in some information about the applicant and then like, it's <laughs> given by a formula. Is that what it is? I believe so. It, yeah, like you have to have, there's a, your eligibility is sort of based on certain criteria, I believe, um, which is different than a competitive grant. So a formula grant, I think you basically just have to sort of be qualified or meet certain criteria. A competitive grant, you're, it's, it is what it, what it says. Yeah. They're harder to come by. You can be incredibly qualified, but your proposal has to be really well presented, and they're harder to get. There's also the use. I don't know the context with all these, but um, the, the use at the federal level of, of a formula grant being that um, there's some you know X billions of dollars that are dedicated to a program, and it's distributed to the states or to counties within the state or regions within the state by some formula based on population or economic needs and so forth. And it's just a formula that the federal government has and then the money's distributed to the state or to the region. And then, and then um, um, it's either used directly by the state or the region or they, they then offer programs to um, distribute the money. There's also some things, yeah, that's helpful. That's yeah, there's also some variability in like the helpfulness of the hyperlinks. Uh, some of them take you straight to pages that makes it very clear like what the grant is, how to apply for it, and so on. And some of them just take you to kind of the text of the IIJA, which is the bill that passed. So it's I would say it's a very helpful document, but some of the links are more helpful than others. Yeah, and, and so what do you think our next steps should be here? Um, I think transportation and heat pumps are two of the more important programs for us, right? So what would you propose that we should do here? I mean, I think the inventory is a great first step. I think I do want to talk to TAC and see what, what they're taking on because it seems like they're definitely active and thinking about this too. So I would say the next step is, is kind of exactly what, what Stephanie's planning with the ARPA and then also talking to TAC, which I can put on my agenda, which has kind of been on my agenda and just hasn't gotten done. Yeah, thanks, Sal, that'll be great. And, and Stephanie, have, have we applied to any of these grants already? Do we have money available or this is all new to us? Um, I honestly haven't looked that carefully through the list. Um, it might be new to me, but that doesn't mean it's not, mm. that it's new to other departments. So I don't always know what other departments are applying for. You know, we all have a tendency, sometimes we have a tendency to go for the same opportunities as well. So um, I don't really, I'm looking quickly, but I don't think there's anything that um, 
I've applied for. Most of the programs that I've applied for that we got funding for our EV charging infrastructure and um, and also a couple of vehicles was through state funding. Okay. Nothing but sometimes better. the state is the administrator for federal funding, so. Oh, Pasa, you froze again. Oh, um, I'll take advantage. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I just want to point out that um, what Stephanie just said about different departments, sometimes even going for the same grant or not knowing what each other are going for. Um, if they're around sustainability, it's a, another uh, reason why we really need a uh, director level sustainability staff. That would make that would make a big difference if Stephanie had that role. Yeah, so yeah, good point, Andra. And I know Laura brought it up too. Is that is that something that we as a committee can propose to the town manager? You already have. Laura okay. and Andra okay. proposed it very directly. So okay. I don't think it's off the table. Okay. We should keep on proposing it. Propose it to our yeah. counselors as well. Okay. And, and Stella, if you don't mind, can we have this as part of our agenda at least once a month? Because this is a key sector that we need to continue talking about. Yeah, for sure. And also, I don't know how other people feel about this, but I would propose putting equipment in this same like realm. Because again, like tree care being what I'm most familiar with, like there's no real excuse for people using gas powered chainsaws, for example, anymore. And yet like people still are, you know, so that like seems like a like that's replacing a chainsaw is a lot cheaper than replacing a vehicle, you know. Um, so I'm sure there's like equipment like that, that's, that's, that exists throughout the time. And unless, unless people think that that falls into some other kind of area, but to me, like an engine is, is kind of an engine and equipment kind of goes with transport in that sense. Yes, Lori. Yeah, there are also mass saves, rebates and incentives for both retail and commercial power equipment for yard work. Some of them are pretty nice, especially if you're a commercial outfit. Yeah, that's why I think we need that document, right? So uh, Lori, just continue to educate as we collect data, show them what the savings is and the impact um, and continue to uh, increase our outreach and awareness. Okay. Yeah, so Stella, I think we should, every, the last week of every month, we should, talk about transportation and progress being made. Um, and I think I wanna do that with heat pump program as well. Whether we have updates or not, and I guess what support you will need. Yeah, that sounds good, that makes sense. Any other questions for Stella? Thanks, so. Stella. All right, uh, Lori, on the resources for everybody. I don't understand. Well, oh, not, not everybody. Um, I've been, uh, I spent a lot more time than, than that very, still very short list would, <laughs> would indicate. Um, it's quite a morass trying to figure out where all the incentives are coming from. And um, uh, even just getting to the Mass Saves website, which is, all I, which is most of what I've done so far, um, can be quite difficult to figure out what's current and what's not. Um, I keep finding surprises on every page, things I didn't know about. So I've been trying to list the ones that I think are particularly of interest to uh, business owners and landlords. And that's what that document is. Now it's not, um, there is a live link that I think you all got an email with the live link in there. There are some programs that I haven't even touched, touched on yet, like lean and CPAs and stuff like that. I mean, I haven't even gotten to that yet. So if you already know of something that you want to list in there, notice there are multiple tabs on that, and I'm going to add more. There are tabs for different types of 
you know, complete energy retrofits and the rebates and incentives for old and new equipment, uh, for replacing old equipment and buying new. Um, so, you know, if you know of a program or you've been working on a program already and you want to add to that spreadsheet, please do. If it's not editable by you, let me know and I'll fix that. I meant to send an editable link. I'm not sure that's what I did. I think I may have sent a view only link. Um, so just let me know. Uh, also, I want to thank Andra, who sent me a lovely list, I guess, put together by local energy advocates. They have a whole library of resources. Is that local? It's, um, it's actually the um, um, building electrification accelerator, the statewide program that ah. Amherst is a part of. Okay, so there's a whole list of, of programs on there, not all of them directly relevant to businesses and, and landlords. So I've been going through and trying to pick through them and list the ones and, you know, this is the program name, this is what it covers, so that anybody who's looking for something specific, a landlord or a homeowner who's looking for, or, or a business owner who's looking for something specific, can you know look at the what does this do can search on some keyword that they're looking for and find all the grants that have that in it or rebates that have that in it so that's sort of the intent here to because so many of these programs are not you know they're they're for organizations or they're for municipalities or they're for uh research or these are the ones that just pay for the equipment <laughs> and pay for the changes um or finance them or otherwise provide rebates or incentives so that's what i'm trying to do um, I'll keep doing that. And then my intention was to start the same thing for homeowners, for uh, single, you know, for, for individual homeowners. Um, but it sounds like that's already underway somewhere else. Andra, is that something Local Energy Advocates already has? Or where did I hear that earlier? Is someone else doing that? Let me say it again. I started looking up what Newton has because it just mm -hmm. occurs to me you know everybody wants this list maybe yes and i've been looking for lists of lists too that's <laughs> i have an enormous number of book bookmarks and web pages that yeah. i still have to look, look at up newton energy coach it looks like they they, they have a, a question and answer page um and maybe they've got charts too somewhere I will do that. And, and Lori, I, I mean, this is, I mean, this is great work so far, whatever you put together, and it's a lot of work. And I just wonder if, yeah, I just wonder if we should also share that if it's an editable link, can we share it with some of our advocacy groups and take some of the workload off you, right? Because I think there is interest uh, from different people. So uh, yeah. Stephanie, can we do that? Is that, can we share a Google link? Um, yeah, so earlier I was a little unclear um, about, it, it, I mean, this seems to just be a list of resources. So there's no, as long as no one's commenting about any of the links and it's literally just adding names and contacts, I think it's probably fine. But you can't do anything like, I don't like these people because I think we should consider just right no comments at all okay just a list of links and a list um, of links and and the, it's important that it be live because this is going to change i mean there's already at least one deadline on there that's like the end of december or something that i noticed right away um you know it, it, it it's going to change <laughs> these these yeah Lori, my, my other thought is to put some sort of a guidance document um say you know laura installed the heat pump and there's sequence of steps that we need to follow. And so there is homeowner can look up heat pump and then there's these steps that they need to do. Yeah, I'm not there yet. That's 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 unique to every house as far as I can tell and every mm -hmm. contractor. And it's uh, um, that would be nice to have, but I don't think there's one size fits all except except for calling that. Like I say, I've had the best luck so far with just calling mass saves and talking to a real person, not just following their links um that's where i've had the best luck um yes. figuring out how to proceed <laughs> yeah let me schedule some time with you laurie i'm interested in this document that you're building uh, do that next i'm week. just going to keep working through this stuff but yeah. uh you know if you guys see something wrong um or you want to change something i will 
I will try to send another link that I'm sure is editable later, Stephanie, um, after the meeting. I think, I think, like I said, this one is only viewable. Um, Any other questions for Lori? Thank you, Lori. All right, uh, Dwayne on the Solar Bylaw Working Group update. Yep, so I can <clears throat> uh, provide an update on that. Um, I think since our last meeting, we've had um, a working group meeting um, uh, uh, two almost two weeks ago, and we're, we're now in the in the process of planning our our um, next meeting, which is uh, on on Friday. <clears throat> our last meeting uh, was on the um, six. Uh, well, I don't know what day. I think the sixteenth or something. Um, it, it fell into this unusual uh, time frame where we had to meet uh, in person. Um, so we all met in the uh, town room, uh, which was nice, uh, but um, also a little scary and masks and everything uh, and not used to it anymore. Uh, but, uh, but we did recognize that uh, it's actually nice to be together. Uh, and I think to some extent the, conver the discussion was um, in enhanced by that. Uh, that being said, we did have a, uh, one person out with COVID and, and another, a couple other people out, but we had a quorum. Uh, and we had uh, Stephanie and, and the IT person did great work in setting up the uh, hybrid uh, system. All that being said, we uh, we had a great um, uh, first meeting. I, I would or or uh, that was our second meeting. Um, we got into a little bit more of uh, trying to plan out our our work and 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 uh, uh, get everybody on board of of um, uh, and some background information. So we really spent the time. Um, one first sort of reintroducing ourselves with a little bit more background of, of our perspectives and areas of expertise. Um, importantly, then, uh, uh, Christine uh, Brestruff, Brestrup. Brestrup, Brestrup, um, who's the planning director. Uh, and, and keep in mind, both Chris and Stephanie uh, provide uh, staff support for this working group. Um, Chris gave us a great, um, uh, as scheduled, uh, um, um, uh, zoning 101 uh, introduction to uh, to what zoning is all about and how the town goes about zoning. Uh, that was really helpful as few of us on the committee or the working group are um, really experts in zoning. Uh, so that was quite helpful. Uh, we then spent some time reviewing, uh, well, two of the model bylaws that we are, um, have, uh, are using as, as references. Um, this is the um, Cape Cod Commission um, solar bylaw, uh, model, model bylaw, uh, as well as uh, DOER has a now somewhat dated, uh, but still useful model bylaw as well. So um, uh, one of our members provided a good overview of those. Uh, we still have the PVPC. Uh, is obviously very applicable to us, um, and they've spent a fair amount of time and effort over the last, very quite recently, the last um, year, I think it came out maybe um, eight months ago, nine months ago, uh, but a, um, uh, a, solar a solar model bylaw plus a guideline. It's a bit more than just a model bylaw. It's a fair amount of information, guidance on, on uh, how to um, uh, go about developing uh, solar bylaws. Uh, and what the issues are. So I think we all got, uh, and that that's going to be reviewed at our next meeting on Friday. Um, and um, uh, we then uh, prepared for our meeting on on um, on fr uh, Friday, uh, and we have an agenda set for that. That includes uh, review of the of the um, PVPC solar bylaw. Uh, Christine again is going to uh, offer her wisdom and advice to us uh, on, on basically giving us all an overview of what land use, what land use looks like now in Amherst, um, uh, sort of an overview of, of land use uh, in Amherst, uh, working with some maps and so forth. So we all get a, a pretty good sense of what's, uh, what's currently out there in our portfolio of, of land use and, and rules and regulations with regard to conservation areas and so forth. Um, and, uh, and then we're gonna to, um, 
uh, started looking at sort of um, discussing our, our work plan and schedule for the next um, uh, nine months or so. Keep in mind, this working group, unlike ECAC, <laughs> has a uh, date certain when we're done, uh, which is May uh, May next year, uh, with a report and a, a presentation of, of these bylaws to the uh, or recommended bylaws to the um, to the uh, council, uh, as well as some other reporting requirements. So, looking to sort of have a um, a discussion on mapping that out uh, in terms of the primary, the larger tasks we have. Uh, to get us from where we are today to there. Um, so that's uh, that's an update. Um, happy to answer questions. And, and that, you know, obviously it's a public meeting and uh, ECAC is, is represented by me, but other members are free to obviously and, and happy to have people join, uh, obviously as, as, uh, as um, uh, public participants. It's uh, Friday, it's Friday noon to two. Uh, we're taking up working time <laughs> in this work. I know it consumes a lot of your time, Dwayne, so thank you for doing this. Um, Andrea? Um, so um, PVPC is Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Yeah. Yeah. And was there another alphabet soup that you mentioned that. <laughs> uh, sorry, if I a document for a list of acronyms too. Huh? Well, but yeah, but, uh, yeah, I don't think I used any others. Um, okay, yeah, so it's just PPP saves. Yeah, P P P Pioneer Valley Planning, Planning Commission. Yeah. yeah. Vasu, you're starting to go Martian again. Um, At six o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> calculate. Um, uh, just wanted to clarify the timing of the solar um, assessment and how that information will be able to feed into your timeline. For, for I mean, it sort of fits into, uh, I mean, as applicability to this group as well as the bylaw, but yes, I've actually put that in front of uh, Stephanie or something I sh shared before um, uh, for her review, but um, yeah, Stephanie, you, you're have, have obviously a better sense of the time frame for that assessment work. Well, these the assessment has a assist. Um, Fasu, can can we mute you, please? Just I'm wondering if it's yeah. I think it's your your microphone. Sorry. <laughs> um, so the the assessment has a six month time frame. So it just went out on Monday. There's a two week turnaround. So when we execute a contract from the point of execution, there'll be a six month turnaround for the assessment to be completed. Um, I think, you know, that will serve as a tool for the solar bylaw working group. Um, but they're going to be developed in tandem. So I think there'll hopefully be some feedback um, from the consultant to the well, to you and to the um, solar bylaw working group. You know, again, some of this will be figured out in the, you know, once we have someone hired, we can create a timeline. Actually, they're being required to create a timeline. So that'll be clear. Thanks, Stephanie. Any other questions for Dwayne? All right, let's move on to the next topic. Uh, Jesse, you had uh, to create our unifying theme, our purpose, our why. So I'll turn it over to you. Well, that was harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, and, and, but it's interesting thinking about all the work that everyone's doing and how to pull it all together. Um, my starting point was this kind of question that Stella asked, how can towns support you in your climate repair goals, which I really liked. Um, but, and the idea, I guess the basic idea is we're in all this work and all these phone calls and all this outreach and networking connectivity, some, I like the idea of 
um, of all those people hearing a similar message of sorts, something quick. Um, and so I, and I thought it would not make sense to send this out as a written thing, because if you have to read it and sort of think about it and read it twice, then it's not an elevator pitch. It has to be something you can actually say out loud um, as a means of introduction. And so I'm gonna read two, or I'm gonna say two that I've memorized, right? Um, and I think the idea, the feedback I'd like is, you know, what are, as you react, what are the key, what's missing? or what's too much, or what does this statement, what does it really have to say? Is it even necessary? Um, does it feel like it helps for us to have this or work on something else, Jesse? But if it is helpful, um, what, what are the key points that need to be delivered? So the first version would be like something, and, and again, this is, it, it seems like when it's when you're thinking of it in the abstract, it seems so obvious to me. And then trying to do it, I understand it's hard work branding. Energy and I, Energy and Climate Action Committee is a volunteer advisory group working with the town sustainability director and town manager to support the town's climate goals. Our main approach is to focus on the intersection of equity and decarbonization. This happens in a few ways, public outreach, technical support, goal setting, and a few strategic initiatives. Now I relate that to what I'm talking to you about. And then I thought, can I say it in simpler language, as in, we're a town committee assigned the task of helping to reduce townwide greenhouse gas emissions. We'd like to do this in a way that improves our quality of life. This includes anything from the electricity we buy to the way we power our school buses to how we heat our homes. We advise the town on reducing carbon emissions, but also want to support the residents and businesses in setting and reaching goals. And I don't know if I, in doing this exercise, I was like, I honestly couldn't tell if I hit anything even close to a target. Can, can you share your screen, Jesse? Ah, yeah. So, uh, if, no, it, I, if, if it's important to have these in the minutes, which I'm not sure if it does, you, you could cut and paste them into the chat or something, or maybe we don't, we don't have do a chat. chat. We don't. There have is chat. no just, chat. Just send okay. it to me, Jesse. Okay, I'll send it. Yeah. So, and part of part of it is like, if you have to read it, I didn't do it right. You know, what I, mean? I, I say that because yeah, I'm I'm thinking about some of the keywords that you use are also, you know, we have a charge and our charge goes about how we're gonna do it or what we're gonna do rather, not how, right? So I think when I thought about this, Jesse, I think about this is why do we exist, right? What's our, pur not our, what is our purpose? Because that is covered by the charge and the CARP action items, right? So you're, so you have, you know, you always want to start with why we exist and you talk, I think the first two sentences in your second paragraph is awesome, right? And then the next part of the sen sentence around reducing carbon em emissions and supporting residents, those are all in the charge. So those are your, um, you know, your how, and then your, your what is all your CARP action. So I, I think we could Keep it really simple. Couple of sentences that were town committee want to be. Uh, I don't know the best town in in the state to or leaders in uh, incorporating policies and on programs um, to reduce emissions. Um, it, that's that's our vision, right? When I I guess that's what I think about as a something that could be our elevator pitch is, is our purpose. Other thoughts on this? I really like the opening sentence of the first one. 
I'm not sure the, the main approach sentence struck me when you said it as a little confusing. Um, I think the obvious segue to that first sentence would be a sentence about the town's climate goals. So first sentence of the first one plus what the town's climate goals, keep, keeping in the idea of, uh, of uh, equity and um, you know, improving all our qualities, resilience, stuff like that. You know, all the all the things that show up in our charge and that the town is interested in. Focus on the town's goals in that second sentence. And I think that would be fine. Just just that. Then you could segue. You could you know whatever comes next is. I could see tacking one of my documents on next, for example. You know, here's and here's by the way is a list useful for business owners or a list useful for. As a yes. business owner, you may want to consider this. <laughs> Laura, Andra, and Dwayne. Yeah, um, sorry that I wasn't at the last meeting, but maybe could I get a little more background on what, who the audience is for this, I guess. And what are I we trying to? But, yeah. Yeah. No, it's a great question. Um, in my mind, it's it's maybe anyone that we talk to that we haven't worked with yet. Um, even if it's just, what were you doing tonight? Or I was at this meeting. Um, or it's I want to talk to you about this heat pump program we're doing. Or whatever it may be so and and for me it's been i've been wanting this for a while is the idea of like what is the elevator pitch what is the brand the branding and these are all business terms and i know that's not we're not running a business but it is like how how can we utilize sort of all of these activities that we're doing in order to have a consistent message go out that might not be the same but sort of people know who we are people know what we're trying to do um etc i think that that captures and, and i came up with this laura um and i am open to the idea of like we don't need this <laughs> no yeah no i think that's helpful i think i think that helps me understand why, why we do need this particularly in terms of our outreach that we're doing yeah that was the context in which all this came up is we're going to be doing this outreach we want to do this outreach we keep talking about outreach well where do we start we start with some sort of statement of you know who we are that people will eventually recognize hopefully and then uh something that it was also a part of a discussion of um if we're going to go out and ask people for their input uh, we also want to have something to offer, which is where the idea of making these lists of programs came up. So uh, you have this statement of this is why we're here. Uh, here's something I can offer you. By the way, what do you want to see done or the other way around? You know, what do you think we should be doing? And by the way, here's a list that may be useful to you. So as part of a cohesive outreach effort. And, and just quickly too, to add that we have, there is quite a bit of really great language between the charge and the climate action plan that for anyone that's willing to read for some amount of time can get to this. My experience increasingly for myself and others is that that is not something people are willing to do. But the link should be included <laughs> to the CARP. Two sure, yeah. The link. Two sentences yeah. in the link. <laughs> Andra and then Dwayne. I accidentally lowered my hand before. Um, I really like the specifics in the second one. Um, and, um, you know, I think we, we should think about what are the specifics or maybe depending on you know, what programs were actually running at the time that it would be obvious, but um, 
you know, which ones do we want to promote now and in the fall? Um, because that makes it real. And um, yeah, I think that the last sentence to add is the, um, so what are your goals that we might be able to help with? I'll, I'll put it on our list, <laughs> you know? Dwayne? Yeah, uh, just two, uh, maybe two s s small things, but maybe significant. Um, one is that I, I, li I like, you know, just not exactly sure what this, what the format is of this will ultimately be, but if it's sort of like a one page or it's something more that's written as opposed to spoken, I don't think we can each memorize this. Uh, so it'll probably be uh, written. I do like having, you know, the, the first one, I think it's important to to spell out that we have this is the Energy and Climate Action Committee. The other one doesn't really mention our name, um, just so pe people know that. I would even put ECAC in there because that way people um, in parentheses, uh, so people get familiar with that sound. I guess it is. Um, uh, but then also, um, <laughs> well, you've disadvantaged me by scrolling down. But um, I think in that the 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 the, the um, I guess I was just reacting to the, you know, volunteer that we are a volunteer advisory group working with the town. Sounds like we might just be a bunch of outlaws that have band, banded together uh, to advise the town. And I, I think it might be worth noting in, you know, a few words that we've been appointed by the town uh, to to advise them on on um, um, on uh, meeting their meeting the town climate goals. Um, I would also pick the wording closely, uh, carefully, so that it's very clear. Which I think the I do like the sec the second the examples in the second part, uh, because I think it's really important that people really understand that this is not just about the town uh, emissions, but for everybody. It, it's a community effort. It's a community wide effort, um, and that is uh, important in terms of the scale of it, as well as bringing people into into uh, the work that we need to do. Yes, Stella and then Stephanie. I think in the second, I think I would edit it. So to just be, we are a town committee assigned the task of helping reduce townwide greenhouse gas emissions in order to improve our quality of life. Because I think, I think at this point, we can state it as fact that like reducing greenhouse gas emissions is like necessary to improve our quality of life. And then, um, in the first, I wonder about, I wonder about like workshopping the word support a little bit because I think I think the the beauty oh no the other support the town manager to support the town's climate goals because I I think the beauty of being a volunteer advisory committee is like should the town's climate goals as laid out like we're advising the town manager so like if we don't agree like we don't have to agree do you know what i mean and to support the town's climate goals like makes it sound like we yeah like guide guide i think is good or some yeah one of those one of those new words um to sort of because that that is the kind of beauty of being a, a volunteer advisory voice in all of this stephanie yeah, I, I guess I was just looking at the language in the second one um, where you say we advise the town on reducing carbon emissions, but also want to support the residents and businesses in setting and reaching goals. I think I understand what you're saying there, but the way it's phrased makes it sound as if the town doesn't do that as well or want to set those goals or reach those goals. I just would, I don't know how, but I think I would wanna have that word smithed a little more. Yeah, and, and Jesse, uh, just take a look at the charge because you don't wanna be repeating the things that are in the charge. I mean, if this is gonna be a quick 30 second elevator pitch, then we really need to start thinking about 
what we want to say. I mean, I like Andra's approach about in the end also saying, here's what we're currently doing, um, but it needs to be something that can be said in less than a minute. Um, I also recommend, Jesse, that you might want to look up uh, Simon Sinek's Golden Circles. I don't know if you've heard of that. Um, it talks about just strategy and our purpose and then moving outward to execution. Prasu Andra has her hand up too. Yes, Andra. Jella had her hand up before too. I, uh, I think she left it up maybe. Uh, She's not on camera, so. <laughs> um, uh, oh, um, along the lines of what some people have said about this is sort of the introductory paragraph to something else. Um, we talked a lot when we were working with the consultants to create a um, the, the CARP um, about doing a five pager so that people don't have to weigh through 173 pages, whatever it is. Um, and I think we could still use that. Um, I, you know, I don't want to spend a lot of our time on that, though, <laughs> because we should be doing stuff. Know that, um, and yet, if we're doing outreach, it, it might be helpful to have a brochure. Yes, Stephanie. Um. Sorry, Jesse, but I'm not sure you totally captured, I think, the point I was trying to make. I wasn't trying to say that, to be clear, that the town is leading the charge. I guess what I'm trying to say is that um, ultimately your goals aren't different than the town's goals. You all set the goal for the town. <laughs> so you're the ones who made the recommendation to the town council. So goals are the same. Um, I think it's just, it differentiates between you know, the town's carbon emissions, but then also to support businesses and residences, I think they're all part of town emissions, I guess is the point I'm trying to make. So maybe it doesn't have to get down to that other sort of granular level. And it could just be advise the town on reducing carbon emissions. And then, you know, wanting to support businesses in, in, attaining those goals, you know, support businesses and residences attaining those goals. But you've got setting in there and I think that's maybe what I'm focused on. Yeah, one, I'm, I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. <laughs> Sorry. And before, no, that's fine, I, but I want to, so I'm gonna have you try, ask you to do it again, it's probably me. But also the, the reason I put setting in there is, that was my way of giving us something of a pedagogical role. I mean, like it, a, a, we might have a conversation where someone doesn't even know they have a climate goal. Um, so that's, that's why I had the word setting in there. Um, gives us like an educational purpose in some way. But maybe could you just, is it, setting, is it that I'm separating the, the town climate goals from the town's people climate goals, yeah, which I, I did think, on purpose. I think so, but I don't think they should be different. I think the town's climate goals come from the people in the town. And I, it seems to me that um, for this language, this particular sentence, I think why it's, I know, I know, I, I also get what you're trying to do. I know what I'm trying to say, and maybe I'm not articulating it well, but I think you you advise the town on how to reduce carbon emissions as well as how to support the residents and businesses in reaching the town's goals emissions goals because 
they may have their own individual goals, but I think the whole point is that the town as a whole has a big goal and that's what we're trying to reach. And we need people to be on board with the, the town's lofty goal. And you all set that. So it wasn't something sort of separate. You all were the ones that came up with the recommendation. You sent it to the town council. They adopted what you brought forth. So I guess I just somehow want to you know, have a nod to that, to that piece of it too, somehow. Um, I don't know, this is getting, what I'm saying is getting more complicated than what I mean. I just simply, I think for me, it just simply felt like, I know you want to separate it out, but I don't know that it should be. Because you're a committee appointed by the town manager and you're there to help the town identify strategies to get to this goal and to help educate the population about reaching those goals and helping you know people reach those goals uh don and then nandra um stephanie i i mean i i think and i i think i see what you're talking about and i'm wondering if, if that can be dealt with pretty simply, uh, and I'm just using the, the first paragraph or the first alliterations, instead of talking about it as the town's climate goals, if somehow or other we could talk about it as the town's community-wide or our community's climate goals or, or something that makes it bigger than it's just the town. Um, because if we if if we use that kind of community language, you can then invite members of the community to to um, tell us, you know, what they think about, you know, what's important to them in that kind of reduction. Yeah, thank you. I think that is helpful. That's a helpful clarification. And I think that is more, it's more the spirit of we're a community. Exactly. I guess I always, I feel I bristle when it's uh, the town and us. It, it's We're together. This is yeah. an effort, collaborative effort. We're the community. We are all the community. And so that's what we should be putting forth. Yeah. And that was I, I beautifully like that, worded. Yeah. Thank you, Don. Thanks, Don. Andra and then Laura. Yeah, Don, that's helpful. And that's something we always have wanted to do. And Jesse particularly talks about, it's like, you know, this mind shift of it's all of us and it's culture shift. And um, so, yeah, if we can talk from that perspective, but I think um, there is something um, uh, under what you're saying, Stephanie, that, um, we, I think as a committee, we do play a different role. We can be the link between the community and the town as the official committee. Um, anyone in town can come and talk to you and, and have you know input and influence. Um, but we're, I think, thinking about our outreach in terms of our role as residents, reaching out to residents, um, and our role as, you know, the customers of the local businesses reaching out to our businesses. And um, that identity difference between, you know, we aren't the town, the committee has its own voice, and I think that is important. Yeah, good point, Andra. Uh, Laura? No, I think I'm good. That's it. I don't think I'm good. Okay. So Jesse, I, I don't know if you 
we'll have time to review this again at the next meeting. Um, I can support you as well if you wanna if you wanna chat offline. This this is what I would say. Is it, am I allowed to say if anyone has any further follow up ideas, shoot them over to me. They can send them to you directly, just yeah. not to the entire committee. Yeah, everyone feel free at any time to send it to me, including how you think you might use this clustering of words, if you think you might use it. And I will take that and whatever else floats through my head and have a version 2.0 next time. Stephanie. Thanks, Jesse. Stephanie, can you, I, I'm kind of computer illiterate. Can you, can you send me the draft document that, uh, so that I can have it in an email? Because I'm happy to wordsmith some things and work on it, but I don't know that I can get it from having it up on my screen, so. Well, so I think Jesse was gonna send it to me. Uh, I'll send- I, And I'll my... send it out to everyone. I need it for the, I need it for the meeting packet anyway. So I'll just send it to everyone. And, and I think in general, wordsmith all you want, that's fine. But I want, I, I think for me, I'm more interested in what's the meaning behind the word, the wordsmithing? Like why, like, like, and your example with the community is perfect. Like you, you, you said the why, and then you gave the phrase that captured that. I really want to understand the meaning behind any wordsmithing. Um, and the meaning could be, this sounds better, but I want to, but it's like what, you know, so that would be helpful. And yeah, I'll send this to Stephanie. Thank you. That was great input, everyone. I really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah. Thanks, Jesse, for putting this together. Okay, uh, let's talk about our next agenda items. Uh, so I have Anna talking about the capital inventory memo. Uh, Laura pain points in the heat pump installation. Um, Lori on the heat pump strategy. Uh, I mean, continue that discussion, and then. I also want the transportation and the agenda, but it'll, it'll just be a discussion that we'll have at the last meeting of every month, Stephanie. So I don't know if that's something that we can just add and say discussions for the last week of every month. Um, is there anything else that we need to talk about? Oh, Jesse and this topic again, right? Um, our elevator pitch. And That's solar bylaw working group update. Okay. Yeah, and Stephanie is bringing back more detail in so we can discuss the heat pump. I think that's covered with me and Lori. Lori and I are going to have a meeting. Okay. And and sorry, um, the first item you mentioned, Basu, was it Stephanie speaking on the capital inventory? Anna. Stella. Oh, Anna. 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 Oh, bingo. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Then I also want to talk about CPACE. And I know, uh, Don, you were initially expressing some interest around CPACE. And uh, is that something that we can also discuss some findings that you might have unpacked and covered? Yeah, I, I, can, I can dig into CPACE and provide at least some information for our next meeting. Thank you. Um, All right, anything else? Oh, yes, Sandra. Uh, going back to the um, Green Communities 2.0 feedback that DOER is asking for, um, it, it gave me a lot of ideas for, oh, you know, we should be doing that. We should be doing this other thing. So it, I think that would be a, a really fruitful thing for all of us to look at, um, as well as give feedback to the state, but even just for us to look at. It's kind of, um, you know, if we didn't have a CARP, it could be a guide 
for actions to take. And, and it might remind us of actions that we really wanted to do. <laughs> and um, they just don't happen to be on the agenda right now. Okay. Yeah, one thing that uh, Stephanie and I are going to do is we're going to look at the CARP document with the prioritization and also a document that Sean and and we're going to combine it and then see what are we going to do and how we're going to track things going forward. Um, so I'm working with Stephanie on that. So we can look at that as well, Andra, and see if it makes sense. Uh, I'm not sure, Stephanie, if we'll have that uh, by our next meeting, but I, I don't know. I depends, can't. Depends, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. And I also want to reconnect everyone on the charge. And I think it, um, aligns well with what Jesse's trying to do in terms of the elevator pitch. I think we all should know what our elevator pitch is, what we're supposed to do, and then the uh, CARP actions that we'll drive. Okay, anything else for our next meeting? All right, let's open it up to the public for comments. If anyone is interested in speaking, please electronically raise your hand and I'll recognize you. Ronnie, go ahead. Hi, this is Ronnie Parker. Um, I came to your meeting several months ago and was sort of interested and in your policy statement had just come out and I thought it was great. And I sort of disconnected because I thought, oh, here's a great policy. Town council has accepted it. And then you just go forward with it. So I'm just wondering, some of the discussion I've heard about elevator pitch and so on seems to sort of go backward. Like, why can't you just say we have this great policy? It's not just a policy. I mean, it's accepted. It's town policy. It's everybody's policy. And we're going to start doing these things to make them happen. I just, um, so I'm a little confused about what this group really does. Um, I like some of the studies you've proposed. It's really exciting to hear that you will, um, you know, like measure emissions of town buildings and vehicles and so on. But, you know, that's one piece of the whole thing. So I don't know. Anyway, that's just a comment because you asked and I've been listening for whatever hours it is. So thank you. Thanks for the feedback, Ronnie. Can I comment on that, Stephanie? Or um... um you can, you're not obligated to, but you can. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Ronnie, when you were talking about policy, were you talking about the charge? I wasn't sure. I, I think what we're trying to drive is as we continue to um you know, talk to more people in the community, the policy or the charge is, you know, there's, you've got to remember and memorize the whole thing and it's uh, really hard to do. So I think we're trying to really start driving some concise messaging to the community. And I, that's, that's the exercise that we're trying to do. So I don't think we're taking a step back. I think we're trying to understand our purpose and, uh, driving the actions that are in the car. But no thank you for the feedback. No one else is raising their hand. All right. Uh, that's the last item. I'm still. Again, thank you all for a very productive meeting today and I'll talk to you all in two weeks. Well done, Basu. Thanks everyone. Thank you, bye. Thanks everyone.